Hello everyone, my name is Kirsty Bishop Fox. I'm here for Iremu Community Centre to talk about tips to host a low waste party. A little bit about me, um, I'm a sustainability educator and change maker. Really what I do is I encourage people to live a low waste and sustainable life. Uh, in a previous life, I used to do a lot of cake decorating. In fact, I founded an organisation called, called Cake Angels. We did the birthday cakes for pretty sick kids and made their birthdays extra special. I found that during that time, there was a lot of waste that was created, which I did find a little bit frustrating, but it was to celebrate special days. However, there are some really simple things that we can do to reduce our waste when we have parties, whether it be um, a small gathering at home or a larger gathering, like a, maybe a, a Christmas lunch or a, even, even a wedding as well too. But I'm going to give you some tips and pointers. Um, if you've got any questions, obviously this is a recording, um, you'll be able to um, find me on my um, website, um, Sustainability Pathways, uh, on my Facebook page and Facebook group as well too. Uh, but let's jump in and get started. So as we do go through, I'm just going to go through, I guess, a few different ways of looking at it. So when we look at having um, a party or even living sustainably, there are a few different approaches to take. And I like to take a good, better and best approach. Now, when it comes to a party, sometimes there are challenges which can be, we don't necessarily face when we're um, going through our every day, but parties catering for a bigger group um, and having people come in, um, it can make it more challenging. So if you're going through and I give you a few tips and pointers and you think, do you know what? I really just don't think I can manage that. Um, for the purpose of this party, it's okay. Just do the best that you can in the situation that you're in. And um, I'm sure you'll have a great uh, event no matter what. Now, I use that as an example, as a starting point, um, especially for the first um, thing I'm going to talk about, which is invitations. Now, invitations, if we wanted to have the, uh, the lowest uh, waste or the most sustainable um, option, the reality is it would be like if I saw you um, in the street or down the road and I said, could you come to my place? We're having a party on Saturday. There's no waste. There's no electronics. There's no anything. Realistically, when it comes to invitations, we probably are going to send something out. It's either going to be in print or electronically. So if you want to send out a printed card, then look at the type of card that you're, that you're getting to send out. Um, the thing with um, cards is if you have them made from recycled paper, then you're a step ahead. Sometimes I use inks and things which aren't as sustainable as well too. So if you can find out about the inks, that's great. Um, but having a recycled base is a really good start. If you're really keen and you can make your own cards, I've seen some beautiful, beautiful cards made from um, recycled paper that people have done at home. Um, I have to admit that's not quite my thing, um, but it is for some. And the more creative you are, the better it is. Other things that you can do, maybe it's a little bit of a novelty, but it is a bit of a fun thing as well too. The image I have here is of, of some seeded paper. So basically what you do is you get that card, you put it in the ground, you cover it with a little bit of soil, water it in and you're going to have something grow from it. I think that's a really special idea for the right type of event. You might want to do, not do that for every event, but for some events it's, it's a way that you can actually take a card and actually have a really uh, stronger effect. Um, but otherwise, if you're really not sure about it, look for a company that um, if you're going to get the cards printed and ask them what they do to be sustainable. Are they being made in Australia? Are they being imported? Um, are they being made from the recycled paper? The Sustainable Printing Co. is not one that I've used, but it's one that I've researched primarily for this talk in the sense that I have been asked before, so where can I get cards that are, that are quite sustainable? So look for somewhere like that or look for somewhere local as well too. Now, if you're not going to have printed cards, then that's actually a great option in the sense that it's not going to be something that you're going to have to have that quite that same thought about in terms of um, the sustainability of the paper and what it's being printed on. Now, these days, anything seems to go for invitation invites. It's not the way it used to be. Um, you can send it by text, by email, quite obvious. But if you want to have something that looks a little bit nice, you can actually get some e-invites. You can find them on Etsy or just have a Google for paperless invitations. And you can actually pay for something to be custom made to suit exactly what you want. So it takes away from the paper, but it can still look really nice. And for a special event, you might want that. Now, if you're a little bit creative, or a little bit um, 
uh, tech savvy. You don't need to be too tech savvy, savvy for this either. The image you see here is one actually I got from Canva. Um, if you're not familiar with Canva, just look it up, um, canva.com it is, and you can do all sorts of imagery on that very quick and very fast. Um, if you type in Perth Day, you'll be given different options, and then you can make up something that's really quite nice. Um, you can actually print them out if you want to, or you can keep them electronic and send it and send it off. So having a paperless invitation can save you a lot of waste right from right from the start. Now that's just one example of the good, better and best that we'll go through. Um, and there'll be different options that you can do to have a sustainable party as well. Just bear with me with the, with the slides as we go through. Now, one of the first things we look at, I guess, with the first thing you see in, the, in, in, a, in, a, in a party is how it's decorated. Now, I will admit, not all of my parties have decorations. In fact, many of them, many of them don't. Um, especially now I've got teenage boys, the last thing they want is any kind of decoration. But if you do want to decorate, there are some things that we can look at to perhaps try and uh, reduce our waste and be more sustainable. So an option that we've got here is to make them. Now, the images that you, that you see here are things that have been made from reclaimed paper. They've been made from magazines, but you can make them from, from anything. Just going to grab here so you can see. You can see me here as well too. This is, this is the, um, the start of one that I was making here. Quite simply, all you need to do is just to get um, a magazine. It could be a newspaper or any paper that you like. And these are cut um, into, into strips. I might just... Um, just uh, stop the share for a moment so that way you can see this better. So this here is just a strip. This is a ruler width. You can make them wider, you can make them thinner. And what I've actually done here is I've fold them into, into three so you can see the ends of the bows here. Probably easier if, if you kind of do it. And then put a hole punch. So you can, can you just see the hole here? I actually happen to have a star hole punch, but you can just use a regular, a regular round. And then we'll just get this here and thread it Put it through one, two, three. Here we go. Here we go. There. And so we're getting these little bows here. Just get that. And this is actually um, a bread tie that I'm using. You can use a pipe cleaner, but I, I wanted to make this completely, completely reduce. And you can make them just, just like that. So I'm just going to pop the, pop, pop me back up here. Whoops. Here we go. I'm only looking in here because I've got two screens happening. There we go. So if you make a cluster of these, and you can actually put them on the wall. You can put them on the wall or on the table, however you like. But it's just a, a little fun way to um, have a little bit less waste with our party party decorations. We can also do things if you want something that's perhaps going to, to last the test of time, which is a better option again too, is you can actually make like a bunting, a bunting out of the fabric. Um, you can make them, you can buy them. Um, I'm not a, a sewer. I didn't make these. I've got friends who did, which is which is great. Um, a friend of mine, Katrina, made the um, the, the pom-pommy uh, one, the, the black, white and pink one, out of reclaimed T-shirts. These T-shirts could no longer be worn, so they were turned into a, a decoration, which can be used year after year after year. And you can make them in all sorts of different fabrics. You can um, buy them, borrow them, do whatever you like, but it just saves having the, the sort of the plastic tinsel or plastic decorations, which won't be lasting as, as long. Um, same thing when I talk about decorations. Um, I wanted to make this all year round. Um, so I'm not going to talk about Christmas a lot, but Christmas decorations can actually, they're, they're usually all plastic. Um, often they're quite flimsy, they don't last very long. If you've got Christmas decorations, by all means, keep using them. Um, but it's a good thought to have if you do want to add to your collection about little things that you can do just to make something that perhaps isn't going to um, be made in China and brought across to the country. And there's so, so many easy things that you can do. It's really only limited by your imagination. I also like to look at different things we can do in terms of having scents and something that's um, perhaps a little bit, um, I, I really like the look of the, the cloves and the oranges and they smell absolutely amazing. Um, I remember as a child, we would actually put the cloves in, into, the, in, into the oranges. We did that as a school exercise and it makes the orange last longer and it's just a beautiful decoration. And if you have an abundance of citrus, if you finally slice them, put them into the oven, just on a low, very low heat or even just the oven light can be enough and it will dry them out. And then you've got some beautiful decorations. You can also use these to pop um, into your drinks um, and you can nibble at them if you like them um, to, to be a little bit chewier. So the, the decorations can save us an awful lot just by thinking, what have we got? What can we use? Do we need to buy something in? And um, there's nothing... 
I, I, li I really like it when we have a party and you just know that the host has actually gone to so much effort themselves um, and rather than just buying something. It just makes such a, such a lovely touch to, to an event. You can even make Christmas bonbons, the easiest thing to make. Um, use it, your, your leftover wrappers and um, you can use them from toilet rolls and put a special message in. Um, Google how to make them if you like. Um, otherwise, you can actually get the cloth ones and reuse them each year, which is a really simple way to save on some waste. But what I did want to tap into in terms of having a sustainable party Sometimes it's the, the, the thing with the parties, especially if you've got younger kids, but even if it's Christmas and with adults as well too, you can have a lot of gifts that perhaps you might not have bought and you don't have a lot of use for and then you've got all this wrapping paper and there's all this waste from the get-go. So I'm going to go through a, different, a few different ways that we can actually save a lot of waste on gifts. Um, one of them is the way that we wrap them. Now, when it comes to presents, there is nothing as fun as ripping our, our paper open, so my kids will tell you. But I do remember the day when I grew up, my mum would make us very carefully open up the paper and she would actually pull the sticky tape off and save that for next year. We can go a step further and we can ditch the, ditch the wrapping altogether. Um, I like to um, use, I've just got one here, out of arm's reach almost, um, just a reusable bag. This bag has been used for countless uh, presents. It's just really simple and really obvious, but these bags here can be used over and over and over again. So that's something to consider to reduce the, reduce the waste. Or even boxes, decorative boxes, can be a, a lovely way to do it there. And so once you've got that wrapping, so long as you've got a place to store it, and a few bags don't take much storage, then you can actually ditch the single-use wrapping paper. Um, something else that I've done, if you've got young kids, um, you'll know what I mean. Um, they come home from school or from kinder and they had all this artwork, which is really great. Sometimes you take it there, it's just like three potato stamps. What do you do with it? That makes really great wrapping paper. And it's always really lovely to receive a gift from a child that's in their own artwork. To me, it just makes it even more special as well too. Another way we can reduce our waste is by uh, furoshiki. Now, this is a Japanese um, way of wrapping um, your presents in tea towels or fabric. It doesn't have to be tea towel, it can be any fabric. That fabric is reused, so it's like a reusable wrapping paper. So just uh, another little tip there. Um, but really when it comes to gifting, what we need to look at is the gifts that we're giving and is it really something that's um, meaning and, and special? Um, these days, it's so tricky, I find, to buy for people um, who've got so much stuff. Everything that's at their fingertips, they've sat there and ordered it online. And when I give a gift, I really want to make sure that it's something that has uh, meaning. <coughs> so I'm going to go through that. And I did want to tap on, I'm glad I've got this here as, as a reminder, is the Kris Kringle. Um, I find with Christmases, um, we had a bit of a shift in our family in the sense that at one stage, everyone got everyone a, a, a gift and you got all these little things and they were lovely things and trinkety things, but we often couldn't use it. It just made so much sense to us to have a Kris Kringle, whether it be your family or your workplace there. Um, you might already do it. Um, and the Kris Kringles, you can actually play with and have themes in to say um, reduce your waste as well too. So that just means that you're actually just getting one person a, a gift instead of five people or 20 people or have any pe people in your pool. But you can have some fun with the Kris Kringles um, and I might get into that as we go through it um, because if you set a theme to it, perhaps to have like a secondhand gift or a, a cap or something that's made um, locally or made yourself, then that could um, save you a fair bit of waste. So as we go into this, when we give gifts, it's often about thinking about the ideas behind it. And when you're giving to somebody who's got everything, and I hope that you, are, you some of you are listening to this and going, you know what, that's a great idea. We already do that. But I look at the experiences that we can give. So if I'm stuck for an idea, instead of saying, what can I have to wrap up? I'll look for, you know, something like a dinner or a movie. Cooking classes are a great option. Um, so many different things here. I'm not going to read through them all. These are just to give you a few ideas. You can pause it on the slide if you, if you, if you want to have a, have a go. Even the surf lessons were such a fun one. I put them on there. Um, a couple of years ago, we were going um, away for the holidays. We were staying by the, the beach um, out in Warrnambool. It could have been anywhere. And I was really stumped for what to get my boys. And they were probably about 10 or 12. 
Um, and it is so tricky to, to buy for, for, for kids these days. And I just thought, you know what, we're going to be out by the beach. They're getting to that age where, you know, the, the riding the boards is fun, but maybe we can do more. And I got them some surfing lessons. They had an absolute ball and said it was the best present ever and it was great because they had a series of lessons so I think I forget what the pack was it might have been three or four lessons over the time where there they had they had them on different days and got to practice and build it up so maybe just think about the different things that you can do give some somebody the experience they wouldn't have otherwise had and the other thing that I wanted to include here is I've got this um, uh, this, this Christmas card. It's more than a Christmas card. It was a donation. Um, this was happened to be from Oxfam. But if you have a look around, there are a number of uh, charity organisations that you can actually just get um, a card. It can be electronic or paper. And then a donation goes to the, the organisation. So if you know somebody who supports an organisation, then this can be an alternative way to give them a present that has a lot of meaning as well too. And I can tell you all of the cards have a bit of humour, so you can have a lot of fun uh, with that as you go. But in terms of gifting the experience, I won't keep talking about this for too much. I hope I've given you a few ideas. But I just know that there's one thing you should never, ever give me, and it's bungee jumping. Uh, perhaps you might know someone who might enjoy that. And, um, but make sure it's an experience that they, that they will in, enjoy. Other things to look at, and when I talked about Kris Kringles, um, I think it's really lovely. Um, the homemade gift is something that really does need to come back. I know in my world I just absolutely adore when somebody has given me um, a relish or a jam or something that they've made. So if you're the type of person to, to make something, whether it be a jam or perhaps it could be some, you might make some biscuits, you make beautiful shortbread biscuits or you like to decorate them, whatever you do, don't underestimate that. Having a gift in a tin that's been bought from a shop is all good and well, but having a, a gift that's just been made from some by somebody for somebody that's really special. So perhaps you could look at the circle that you're in and go, do you know what, maybe let's do something different this year. Let's make something homemade or... Or, or, or you could um, make something homemade. Of course, it's made homemade. Um, or you could actually, if you if you sew on your men, this is a pair of shorts that was turned into a bag. So if you don't um, craft yourself, then perhaps you can find an artisan, maybe at a market, and buy a beautiful gift like that that's been made especially for somebody or custom for somebody. You could even have somebody's name embroidered on a bag or something, something like that. This is really just designed to talk to get you get you thinking out of the box. Even just things that are, you know, um, people might use on a, on a daily basis that are that are really straightforward. Um, I remember my grandma. My grandmother grandmother's no longer with us in, in body. That's what happens as 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 life goes on. But I remember she said to me, she was such a sweet thing. Sometimes I would buy her some like soaps and powders or, or things like that. And one time she said to me that she saved them for special, which was so typical of somebody of, of her generation. And I just thought, you know what, these soaps to me, they were like an everyday soap. So I made sure that I bought soap to her so that she could have that little bit of special every day. It wasn't just every now and then. And she was so happy to get these soaps um, because it was something that she wouldn't buy herself. She thought it was a real treat to have the, the lovely scented things. So maybe you can dig into the heart of somebody just by going, do you know what? This is something I would typically buy. I can buy this without packaging too. You can buy soap package free if you look for the right places, often in markets or some of the, um, the sustainable um, bulk free stores, that type of thing. Um, the other thing too that is, is really quite lovely is um, the potted um, like some strawberries, which we gave to my sister one year. Um, or otherwise, herbs are a really simple thing to grow. And if you've got somebody who's just trying to do that bit more, grow them, pot them up yourselves if you're a gardener. It's really quite easy to do and give them some tips. Have something they can put, um, you know, by the back door or in the windowsill that's really low maintenance if it's someone who's not used to gardening. But to have something like strawberries grow, that is just a gift that keeps on giving. So do think about it and think what can we do that's a little bit different and then every time someone picks a strawberry or whatever fruit it is you, you give them, it could be, you know, some parsley or some mint, um, they'll have the opportunity to think of you each time. So what a lovely gift to, to give and what a lovely gift to receive as well too. But in terms of uh, giving things, if these aren't quite uh, what, what you're looking for and you're thinking, no, I really do need to get something there, um, maybe you could challenge uh, your family or your friends and go, right, let's have a gifting reset and look at it through a different lens. 
there are so many gifts that you get where you know you might get it and it was a great idea but you're not going to use it. You could re-gift it, you could have a joke out of it or perhaps you could have some fun. So I think of a story of my um, now 14-year-old but a few years ago we were in the middle of lockdowns, he was turning 12 and uh, we were at home as everybody was at that time and he said to me, um, I, I was talking about his birthday. He said, Mum, really what I want for my birthday is a fairy floss machine. I'm going to thank good old TikTok for that because he saw them make all these multicolored fairy flosses. And I was kind of like, oh, my gosh, the sugar and do you really want to have? And in the end, he said, Mum, uh, there's not really anything I, I really want or need, but I'd love to have the fairy floss maker. And I waited up and I thought, a fairy floss maker, okay, uh, we will do it and see what happens. But I said, I will give that to you on one condition. I said, we're going to see if we can find somebody who's got one sitting in their in their um, cupboard that they just don't use anymore and we're going to, to, to buy it off them. And he turned around and said, okay, fine, fine. He knows how I work, but he wasn't, he, he wasn't too convinced I was going to be able to get one because when he had a fairy floss maker, there's no way he'd be giving it up. Um, in the end, I actually had a look around and I almost got one but somebody bought it too quickly. In the end, what I did was I actually put a call out in the group and I said to, has anyone got one that we can buy or borrow? And a lady came to me, she said, I've got one you can have. And I said to her, how much do you want for it? Now, I'll be really upfront, I was prepared to pay for this, but she said, no, I was going to be tossing this out, so I'm just going to give it to you. So in the end, I gave that to my son. He also got some money for his bank account, which he was incredibly happy about. But this is a gift that, that's kept on giving because now we actually loan it out to our friends so they can actually have fairy floss at their parties as well too. I wish we could re-gift it, but he's holding on to it. But if you actually think about what do I want and what could I have, then perhaps you could get a secondhand gift that really does have a lot of meaning. Now, sometimes I'll admit when it comes to family members, it's not always as straightforward as that. So I decided that with a gift giving, I was going to make it easy and uh for, to receive a gift myself that was secondhand. So I've actually gone and said, you know, there was one year I, my sister said, what can you get me? I'm like, I don't really know. I'm stuck for ideas. I said, right, how about I would love to have another indoor plant. Um, but what I would really like is if we can get the indoor plant with a secondhand pot, a pot that's come from somewhere or somewhere else so that way we're not buying you because I'm sure there are some pots just sitting around. Well, I didn't realise this when I told her, but as luck had it, she actually had some pots that she wasn't using, so she actually gifted me those pots and the plants to go with them. I made it easy by giving the suggestion. Um, other things I've even done is I've had a look on Marketplace and gone, right, okay, this is the waffle iron that's there, or you can get it from here or here. And I found it secondhand for you. So make it really easy if you want to have, receive a secondhand gift yourself. I found that when I suggested it, it didn't quite work. But when I put it in front of them, it started the ball rolling. And now it's easier because I've set the example by doing it um, that way. Which really ties me into this one here is about having a conversation with, with your family um, and your friends when you want to do this. So I've talked about my sister who's, who's, who's gradually come around. And when you're talking about a bigger family, um, it's not always as straightforward as this. Um, I know my parents are kind of like, really? Um, you want me to get you what? Um, and so I, I, when I look at having a sustainable party with my family, I pick my battles. What can I win? What can I make it easy? Can I make one change? Maybe I can't get them with everything, but we've got to start somewhere. Find out um, who's with you. Um, hopefully um, you will, but maybe um, you've got somebody who's going, yeah, that's a great idea. You might have those who are going, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, this sustainable thing, it, it doesn't work for me. Um, don't take offence to that. Just go, right, we're just going to chip away and chip away. And if we can't win you with the presence, then I'm going to talk into the food and other ways that we can actually make our party sustainable as well too. But if you can actually just go, this is what I'm doing and this is what I would like you to do, please support me, then it's really quite helpful. It's also helpful if you've got younger kids as well too. Um, I know back in the day when my kids were younger, the amount of times we had presents, just far too many presents, it, it, was, it, it crucified me the amount that we got. My kids were really quite good in the sense that when they opened up something, if they looked at it and they knew that they weren't going to use it, 
what we would do is we would actually go, we're going to find somebody else to give that to, and we would put them under the Christmas tree um, at, um, at the end of the year for the children who um, didn't have families that could buy them presents. So my children were really happy doing that because they got something that they couldn't use themselves or didn't want to use themselves, and they passed it on to somebody else. So perhaps you can have a conversation like that. But even before you get to that point, um, and I must admit, this is something that I did as my children got a little bit older. It wasn't a thought that I had when they were born. I wish I did, um, but I didn't. Um, and I have a, a mother-in-law who is a lovely, lovely human, but she would just buy so much stuff. So now to do it again, what I would do is I would just say, just explain, we don't need all these things. If you can get us perhaps a, um, a membership at the toy library, there's a lot of toy libraries, um, look up a local toy library. So that way you can take your child in and get new toys each week or every few weeks, whatever suits you. Um, we don't. We would rather have books that we can borrow from the library or books that we can pass on. Perhaps you could see which books you can get from the op shop. So have those conversations and plant the seed. But don't just say, don't get me anything new. Just give them some ideas and suggestions or something that they can, they can do as well too. But moving right along, um, and I'm conscious of uh, the ideas that we have, and the time that it takes to, to listen to this. So thanks for sticking through and listening to, to, to all this today. Um, party food is a way where there can be so much waste, but there are some really simple ways that we can do to reduce waste and make our lives so much easier. I'm just a really big believer of keep it simple. I have done these spreads that have taken me all week to prepare and plan and decorate. And I can tell you, I have been there, I have done that. and. Now I put in much less time and it is so much more rewarding and it's also healthier for us as well too. So I look at what's in season and instead of going crazy and, and doing, you know, all different things, the, the fruit is something that just, I mean, look at how beautiful this fruit display is um, right now. And that's just made from seasonal ingredients. Um, I'll admit this is a picture that I've, I've pulled, but it's just one that is really quite inspiring. Um, look at your portion sizing and how much is there. The biggest waste that comes from food is over-catering. We always want to make sure that we've got enough. But if you, if you are the type to over-cater, plan and accommodate for that. Um, plan to use those leftovers. Ask people to bring containers. So if you can go, right, I know there's going to be leftover food. Can you all please bring um, a container so you can take some home? Or if you think people might forget, get a stash of those takeaway containers. You might have them from your own takeaway or if you don't typically buy takeaway, then put a call out. Um, I've put calls out um, to friends and family and even to a Facebook group. We've got a local buy nothing group here. Um, there's good karma groups. There's all sorts of groups. And say, so, look, can I just have half a dozen containers, wash them up, and, um, and, and then people can take their food home. It's not going to matter. So... Um, plan for it. And if you are going to have the leftovers, and you know you will, look at the food you've got and think, what can I be doing that week for it? Store the food properly. So the best tip I can give is if you've, if you've got a lot of food, bring it out in stages so it's not sitting there all day um, or put it away quickly at the end. And then if you've got any leftover meats or salads or veggies, um, you can make frittatas and um, you can make some tarts and pies and things. I've done talks on reducing um, food waste um, so you can perhaps um, get some ideas from there. Um, also, there's some, you know, you can, crepes are a really simple thing to make, but just think how am I going to do it and plan Plan your leftovers. The other thing that you can do with food is, is just think about your preparation and don't worry if it's a bit too hard to, to, to read on the screen that the list that we've got um, are here. That was just uh, something that I mocked up um, talking about like Christmas planning where there's a huge amount of waste, but there's ways to Easter, there's ways to birthdays too. Make your list and think about it. Think how many people are we feeding? Gosh, we're feeding 12 people, but I'm sure we could feed 20 by all of this. So go through it and check it and think what can we reduce without being too, too, you know, you want to make sure you've got enough food, but you don't want to have that excess left over. Or otherwise have it in a way such that you can actually, you've got that backup food. Something like crackers or biscuits or fruit that's not being cut is something that you can have on hand and if you don't end up using it for the party, then you can actually use it for something else later on. So it's just, just planning and um, cutting back that food um, because we all are typical over caterers. But when it comes to food, sometimes what we can do is look at the styling side. I know this ties into decorating a bit, but it really does make sense to, to follow through. As a cake decorator, something that 
used to happen in my world a lot was there was just it was just a crazy overwhelming space for the party tables and the party tables is where a lot of waste can waste can happen because you want it to look a certain way and, and be a certain way but just by keeping it keeping it low and going right we're just going to have a few plates and platters here we can keep it really really simple i like the rustic looks now if this isn't your your thing and you don't want to go to that but you want to have the same lovely effect then you can use a food as a decoration and ditch away with everything I said at the start about having you know your streamers and whatever else but this is just a really lovely simple way even if you don't consider yourself to be creative to make something like a Christmas tree or you can do any shape um, just through layers and layers and layers like that's a really simple thing to do and having something like that with a little bit of everything can actually reduce waste because you've put it into a into a narrow type thing rather than having platters and platters which go which go crazy but just put it together and be a bit creative use food as a decoration as opposed to just something that we've got to pile up and it's surprising how much waste you can reduce do make sure that people know, of course, they can eat it no matter how beautiful and decorative it is, of course. Um, something else we do always need to think about too is drinks. And drinks, there can be so much waste. Um, I really do try and steer away from the single serves when it comes to, to drinks and things because that's just, yes, it can be recycled, but some things take a lot of energy to be recycled. So if we can reduce that, that's even better. Um, but look at the, the natural fruit juices and, and don't be afraid to have water as well too. I know at a party people will drink more than water, but have water on hand and have water on, on hand in jugs, not in bottles. It's a really simple little thing to do to, to, to reduce waste. But one of the biggest um, waste uh, things I find in parties is actually the, um, the people go, right, I don't want to do all this washing up or I don't have enough for 20 or 30 or how many people are coming and they can tend to get disposable plates and cutlery, which is just something that um, is uh, it's a lot of waste that we can avoid. Um, I wanted to introduce you to um, a group called Party um, Kit Network. I've got a QR code so you can jump straight to the website if you're watching um, there. Otherwise, it's Party Kit. I think it's partykit.com.au. Um, I should double check that. Um, and just uh, look that up. These are people who've actually put kits together and they'll cater for various amounts. So you can borrow them and have a plate and a cutlery in a cup. Some will even have decorations in there as well. So have a look for those. Otherwise, look for the Buy Nothing groups on Facebook or Good Karma groups. Um, there are so many different groups and apps around. But don't be afraid to ask your friends and family who are coming. I've only got a dinner set for 12 people, but we've got 20 people coming. Can Is there somebody who I can borrow some plates off and get them to bring along? Explain why. Just looking not to have the waste, so I don't want disposables. So perhaps you can get somebody who's coming to the party to, to bring it along. So just uh, start thinking outside the box and think, how can I reduce the waste? And if we can reduce it by the food, reduce it by the, the cutlery and crockery and think about your presence, then we can have a much more sustainable and low waste party and just remember too, if you've got people, and I know you have these people in your life, I have them too, that come along and they just don't live as sustainably as you want to, the best advice I can give is don't, don't keep going down, down them and you, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to. Just tell them what you did, not what they should do, what you did. And when you tell them what you did and they see what you did, then eventually it'll chip away and, and hopefully they will um, be more respectful of it next time or maybe even... Um, change their ways for their own party. Now, if you've got any more questions uh, or any questions because we had to do this online rather than uh, in person, um, please jump onto my website, sustainablypathways.com.au. You can send me an email um, or you can jump into my Facebook group, um, Sustainable Home and Low Waste Living. Um, please, if you've got any questions, do feel free to send them through. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this and got some tips and can have a more sustainable party uh, next time uh, you have one. Thank you. Okay, we're just ending.